Um, yeah, listen to my voice. It's like scratchy and really, I usually have a very mellifluous voice, but that's, here I am. Yeah, you know what, people aren't going to notice that. I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Roger Ames. All right, um, tell me about your role with the College Springs Conservatory and with the summer intensive. Um, well, so far my role is limited to the summer intensive, but we're talking about getting more involved. Um, several years ago, Deb Morrow at Central City um, asked me if I'd come down and try doing a workshop with the kids. I found out it was the intensive uh, a little later and um, as I love to do this. I, I actually teach teachers how to do it and I, I do it myself where I'm resident composer and have done it for years. So it felt like a fit. Um, so how long have you been working with the intensive? I think this is my fifth or sixth year. Um, I, we started without a, a writer, which was interesting because um, I'm tough, because uh, Jeff is a brilliant writer and he makes my job much easier. Um, but it was, we started for a couple of years without him. Um, and the kids were responsible, of course, for the libretto, as well as the music, as well as the production. Um, but it was a thrill from day one. Kids are great here. Uh, tell me a little about Jeff and your relationship besides the intensive. Well, Jeff and I have uh, written several pieces together. One uh, commissioned by Central City Opera called En Mis Palabras, and uh, they still tour that all over Colorado and Wyoming. Um, and Jeff and I are starting a new project very soon. Um, um, the Tempest, actually. We're going to do a music theater piece on The Tempest for kids, for young voices. Um, he and I have taught together for 20 years in Great Neck, so that's, uh, and we're good friends. And he's taken me to the hospital a number of times. <laughs> Against my will. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, very cool. Um, so, obviously, you're very involved in opera. Can you, and these are like high school students, why is opera so relevant today, and why is it important for 16 year olds to be learning? Well, um, we have really wonderful conversations over lunch and dinner about what opera is. And um, although I love opera, and I love the thing we usually think of as opera, Italian opera, and Wagner and those guys. Um, but um, for years I've, I've done this with the idea that opera is anything that involves story, music, and drama. So that um, we, um, what we're working on here doesn't necessarily have the sound of an opera in the traditional sense. Some people think it sounds like a musical. Some people think it sounds like a hybrid. But it is a, um, it is because the kids are so deeply involved in writing it, <coughs> excuse me, what their, their, their limited experience um, brings a certain tone to the work. Because they have young voices, we're trying to write stuff that's careful about that. But but they also have incredibly wonderful imaginations so that the final result often sounds like a musical um, with a whole, whole lot more singing, um, which is pleasing to us. Nice. Um, can you touch on the relationship between, uh, with Central City Opera? Um, I've been going to uh, Central City uh, probably for 10 years. Uh, 
I started by uh, doing a teacher training workshop to train teachers to do what we do here um, in their classroom to take um, especially uh, local history or curricular subject matter and to turn it into story and music drama. And um, so I've been doing that for years, actually all over the country, but Central City for about 10 years. And then Jeff and I got involved in, in writing for them. And um, so it's been a long time and a wonderful relationship. Um, how does their involvement make the um, I think one of the most unique things about this program is that the, I think these kids would leave Colorado Springs and have a great feel about what they've done over the many days and the real long hours they've put in, both doing their scenes and writing their opera. But the unique thing about this program, and it's by far the most exciting program I've seen, and I've had some myself, I've run some myself, so I know what that is. When they go to Central City, they get a world of excellence, professional training. Um, they're invited to a number of wonderful uh, classroom experiences. They participate and co get coached by the music director of the opera company. They talk to the directors who are there in residence. They observe and participate in coachings by some of the best musicians in the country. So the final event of those few days up in Central City is really way more than frosting on the cake. Linda, like, obviously put together the conservatory here and um, how, you know, I know she's got a lot of energy, you know, how, can you talk a little bit about how important she is to keep this program alive? Well, you know, um, when I was the, the age of these kids in the conservatory, I had a mentor that reminds me so much of Linda that it's uh, wild, actually. Um, and she, too, had unlimited energy and p could persuade people to do anything, which I know Linda can do. Um, I think she's... Um, I don't know, how do I put this? I think she's brilliant. I think she's an incredible human being because she she's not only working in the arts with these kids, she's, she is a humanitarian of first order. And to see her work with these kids with both their skill development and their humanity um, as something she wants to care for, she's unique. and. Um, very few people walk on the planet that have that gift that can persuade adults to um, participate in a way that's not just high level artistry, but that's uh, has as its foundation a real care for kids. Um, along those lines, why do you think arts education is important for these students and in these? Um, when I was uh, graduating from high school, I, I, I got to make a valedictory address, okay? And um, my address was the missing link in education. That was many years ago, when actually music education was pretty, pretty vibrant compared to where it is today in the public schools. I think that, that the First of all, you know, the old story, give kids something to do after school? Well, of course. And, and some kids play sports and love them, and some kids do theater and love it, and some kids do both and love it, which I did when I grew up. And I think that, that uh, we're sadly missing the idea that kids don't just benefit from the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Kids don't just benefit from the, the work that 
comes about because you're working in the arts. It's the community that gets built and the collaborative skill and the, and the uh, knowledge of, and the ability to listen and the ability to cooperate um, that come along with this particular art form, music theater, that involves so many art, other art forms. Some art forms are very individualistic. This is collective. And uh, I know that what she does in the conservatory and what all the teachers do uh, has a great deal to do with building community, aside from all the skills that the kids are uh, learning about how to play or how to act or um, it's just a, quite a remarkable thing. And if kids don't get it, we go down big time. We're doomed. Um, how would this program impact your life? <laughs> it's made me very tired. <laughs> um, well, I think this program has impacted me in a number of ways. For one, when, um, up until last year when I uh, retired, uh, where I taught, well, the minute I saw kids in action here, I wanted to bring some of my own kids up. So it's, that's, that's been a high impact. I've been able to, to uh, bring them along. And they're much better for it. And I am too, as a result of the training of um, I often tell my friends this is the best two weeks of my year, and I feel that way because the word intense can't even begin to describe what we do, but we do it so fast and furious, and it seems to um, contain such beautiful emotionality in the work as well as in what we produce, that at the end... Um, it's a very touching and fulfilling experience. Intense is the right word, I guess. Lots of kids go off to summer camp. Lots of summer camps are great. Um, here, I think the unique combination of real care from the faculty uh, to the kids, the combination of an incredibly skilled staff, combined with the chance to go up to Central City and be there with a professional opera company and to perform in the festival like we're professionals is uh, pretty extraordinary. And you put that together with what we try to do here, which is train all the elements of performing music theater, but to also give kids a first-hand experience with creating their own piece. Um, I don't know of another program like that in the country, and I think it's an awfully good program to think about. Awesome. Um, I realize now I wanted me to ask, can you, um, the importance of the relationship with Colorado College and kind of what they... Nah, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful campus. Yeah. Um, it's, the food is not as good this year. Do you know that? It's really interesting. The food has been fantastic, but this year it's like, whoa, what is... Oh. Yeah. That's fine. Linda will touch on it because it's. You know, I she needs to. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. One one needs to kiss Colorado <laughs> College where it counts. <laughs> I get that. 